Earth and solar system were created 78 trillion years ago. As soon as our Earth was ready, 144,000 ancestors came from another star system, the star system Sirius, that was worshipped by the ancient Egyptians. They inhabited the Earth after preparing it by seeding it with plant and animal life. After about 7,000 years since their arrival, their population increased from 144,000 to 1 billion, 8 million. This number, 1 billion, 8 million, is the most sacred number in creation. It is the total number of original people who inhabited the first Earth of our universe countless trillions of years ago. Thus, every Earth inhabited thereafter keeps this number as their final and stable population. It was determined to be the ideal number of people that can inhabit a planet the size of Earth in complete comfort without imposing on each other or the natural resources as well as the animals and plants. That enables complete freedom of movement for all life on the planet and is essential for peace, prosperity, and spiritual growth, the gaining of knowledge. The reason why the number is specifically 1 billion 8 million is described in the mathematics section of Blackroot Science. The Earth mentioned above was created by 1 billion 8 million original gods from the stars of the previous universe. They had existed in the previous universe towards its end, along with trillions upon countless trillions of other people in a state of mind called divine unity, or the oneness of God. It is a state of mind where all people in the universe unite as one. This one is God in truth, not the spirit God of modern religions. When trillions upon trillions of people at the end of the previous universe are united as one, they experience an indescribable expansion of their minds, which were as one mind. It expanded to such an extent that it not only circumscribed the entire universe, but exceeded its boundaries by an immeasurable extent. The one mind, or God, became so large that the previous universe could no longer contain him or herself. He or she felt the need for a larger universe in which the experience of life would continue. The trillions upon trillions of people still united as one then decided to abandon that universe. They consciously left their perfected bodies and rose in mind far above the universe. They then locked down on it and saw it as a small sphere, the way Earth looks when seeing it from high above in space. Now, the mind is always attached to a body. There's no such thing as a mind without a body, as so-called spiritualists would like you to believe. The mind can extend beyond the outer reaches of space, even expand infinitely, but a magnetic attraction always attaches it to a physical body. The magnetic attraction dissipates at death and the mind and individual personality or soul then ascends. I would discuss ascension at a later time. The unified mind of the people who were as one person was so immense that the stars appeared to be the size of atoms. As this person was contemplating the universal sphere, he or she saw that it was adequate for habitation of a new earth, with all the stars being its atoms. He or she made 1 billion, 8 million new bodies corresponding to the size of the new earth. Using some of its substance, the stars and atoms, then he or she disconnected the magnetic connection to the old bodies and left them in the old universe. The 1 billion, 8 million gods then descended upon the new earth into the new bodies and became its first inhabitants. The matter of every star and planet in the universe is created in seven forms. In modern words, these are magnetism, electricity, light, ether, gas, liquids, and solids. The fourth substance, ether, is the central supporting substance of the other six. It is the womb of creation called space. It is black in color, as one can see, by looking out into space at night. This absolute blackness called space not only supports the other substances, but it also gives individual color to all objects because the color black contains all other colors in itself. Hence, when the 1 billion, 8 million original gods made themselves new bodies, they covered them in skin whose color is black, getting it directly from the ether.
because the gods create all plants and animals from their own bodies, they need to have all colors stored in a single color in their creative germ, which is called the dark dominant germ or gene, the source of what modern people call melanin. Upon arriving on the first earth, the one mind, God, incarnated instantly in 1 billion, 8 million bodies, as already said. Half of them, 504 million, were female and the other half were male. Each pair of male and female gods were soulmates. They always create in soulmate pairs, even when in large groups, because all creation has a male and female, or negative and positive principle. Negative is not used in a derogatory sense, but as a complement to positive. The 1 billion, 8 million original people then proceeded to instantly create perfect plants and animals called the original totems, from which all evolutionary life forms evolved. They also proceeded to create new stars and planets around the first earth by condensing part of their expanded mind. After living on that first earth for more than a trillion years, they finalized their plans for the completion of a new, much larger universe. They then gave birth to their descendants and then passed out of life, ascended. Before passing, they established the Society of the Black Nation. They established it by withdrawing from or leaving their divine unity in which they had existed for trillions of years. They did this in order to be able to bring new life into the world, new persons who had never existed before, such as you and me. At the same time, in order to ensure the continuity of eternity, these same 1 billion, 8 million original gods continue to incarnate in the new people. They reside in the unconscious part of the person's mind and are called the mind of God or divine gift of ancestral memory or what modern people call the spirit of God. Thus, every black person, even though he or she is born brand new, is simultaneously one of the 1 billion, 8 million original gods. Only the personality is new. The spirit is old, even eternal. The 1 billion, 8 million original people all withdrew from divine unity except 24 people, 12 men and 12 women. They became the kings and queens called the 24 elders, who are really 12 gods or 12 soulmate couples. The 24 elders are called the custodians of divine unity. The 12 gods chose 12 assistants each and called them 144 chiefs. The gods divided the population into 12 tribes of 84 million people. They further divided each tribe into six clans and set two chiefs, a man and a woman, as the heads of each clan. The chiefs chose 1,000 people each and called them the 144,000 judges. They sent them in soulmate pairs all over the earth to set the foundations for the 72,000 cities. Each couple took about 14,000 people with them to establish their city. This was the basic organization of the black nation established by the original gods on the first earth. When other earths were completed and settlers sent to them, this organization was repeated and remains as the divine form of kingdom slash queendom on every inhabited earth throughout the universe. The original gods also established seven great rituals of initiation to be used by leaders to elevate all new people to divine unity. God's purpose for creating universe after universe is to increase him or herself. Every person who completes the seven great rituals becomes full God, exactly like the original people. At that moment of completion, God rediscovers him or herself anew, as if he or she had never existed before. This is how God renews him or herself, thus overcoming the stagnancy that would be the case in an eternally all-knowing being who never changes. In addition to the seven great rituals, the original people also established many other rituals and customs covering every area of science and life. They then initiated the leaders of their descendants into this knowledge before passing. Their initiation rituals have been faithfully transmitted from generation to generation since the beginning. On our earth, this form of divine rule existed uninterrupted for 78 trillion years until 6,000 years ago when a certain God decided it was time for all the other gods, you and me, to experience that part of us contained in what is called the non-creative recessive light germ. He caused the birth of new races of people, the non-blacks, 
who would be the vehicles to manifest all that is in that gene. All things without exception are contained in God. God will experience all that is contained within him or her. He or she knows all, but has not experienced all. He or she uses the creation for the purpose of experiencing all that is known, including what is called evil. Hence, 6,000 years ago, a God by the name of Yahweh, called Yakub in ancient scripts, was born here on our earth. He, together with about 60,000 volunteers who are called the Elohim, made the non-blacks in our image. They made them by suppressing the dominant black gene and slowly unfolding the recessive light gene over a period of seven generations of offspring, or 200 years, thus caused the appearance of the first light race born to black people. After another 200 years of deliberate and careful breeding, they caused the second light race to appear out of the first. Then 200 years later, the third race appeared. And finally, 66 years after the appearance of the third race, yellow race, the fourth race, Caucasians, appeared. These 60,000 people, Yahweh and the Elohim, thus initiated the modern age and the process that would eventually bring our divine kingdom to a temporary end. In brief, this is the sacred history leading from the first earth to our earth and to the present situation or cycle called evil, which was preordained to last 6,000 years. Mm -hmm.